Um, oh, yeah, I think two, two people are in already, yeah? Can you hear me? I can. <clears throat> okay, how are you doing? I'm pretty well, thank you. How about yourself? Uh, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's a problem actually. I, my <laughs> my car, <laughs> my car is. Well, I'm glad it happened um, very close to my house. If it happened in the highway, it would happen something but di uh, different. Oh yes, yeah. that's that's very very good that it did happen like that. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, I was able to see your uh, your your phone. I didn't know that they have their contact list. On the um the uh, UMGC web um this class this class so I was able to find it uh, and then started sending the messages and I also I actually posted an announcement about it but I wasn't sure you guys would see it so uh, that's why I started looking for something more direct yeah this is the announcement here that I posted mm -hmm. about it yeah mm -hmm. so we're now in week nine right. Yes. So um, I know that they have a uh, there's an announcement that come by from the school, but I always post an announcement uh every week before the beginning of the week to tell you you know show you the direction to follow. I recommend you read them so that um you won't get confused. And I I put a lot of information on it that will help you. Uh, you know some videos and some reading materials and so on and so forth. Um, so this is the, the one of the announcements here. And plus, you know, the discussion question, they usually put, uh, there's like four different questions. I would like, always like to, I mean, if you guys can choose one of them, not all of them, just one, we can all focus on that so that if there's any, any response from the classmate, you will see it there. Uh, because some classmates might respond and you may not see them because they're responding to, they're responding to a different question. So, um, I I I would, I would suggest like today and tonight you can I can I can pull up the question then you uh, we choose the one that everybody will respond to and then we stick to that one. So before we begin, uh, let me uh, put down their name the names names of people who are here. I think I brought this thing out. Yeah. Yep. Happy on paper. I got um Amber is here. I got um Briani here. Yes. I got Little. Little. And I got uh Mr. Brown, Steven. I got Steven. I got Steven here. Yeah. So we are so we are four of us now. Okay, good. External. So you got me a professor? Yeah, Steven, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, I just uh, put, uh check, check your name now. So, now this is the announcement. So, this week we'll be working on uh analysis of, of variants. Um, but I want to you know, uh, give you a background, a little background on test of hypothesis. Then we can now, I mean, let's make a flashback to test of hypothesis. Then, when we come back to analysis of variants, there's the material to read, and there's the videos I put here for you, and you know. So those materials are, are actually like this one. I think this one is like a template where you can you, um, you can put answer yeah, 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 uh, different values and it will give you the answer. If you put it the right way, it will give you the correct answer. I think it's like a template. Then the then one of the two assignments this week, one is the article review. I will say, I will say if you know how to do article review, you can start fine. But I wanted to post a, a sample. I would want to do a sample and upload it by start Saturday evening so that you can use it. Look at that sample as a guide, you know, see what I, you know, I, I will do an article review for myself, for myself to finish up there, a different article. Then I'll upload it, my announcement, I, I, mean, I will post an announcement and upload it there. So you can look at that and follow that one to do the review for this article. Uh, you can find the article, Um, um I think it's, um. Let me see if I can pull it where it, it is uh, from the syllabus. Yeah. Let me go up. 
Yep. Say that here. I think I wrote it down here. Actually, a matter of fact, I said. Okay. Oh, this I said I'm going to put a sample. Okay. Anyway. Now I want to show you. Uh, there's a place that is they have more oh, this. Let me go there. And see. Uh, contents. You can see from here. Um. Overview from the overview. Yep, but view. You can see, see that you can um you can where you can locate it is uh, in the syllabus. Well, yeah, doesn't see that in the syllabus. Let me look at the syllabus then. Week nine. Okay. Yeah, this is week nine right here. Um, it says here that this is the uh article review. The article to review is right here. It's on the syllabus. This is the link. Uh, can you see the screen here? Hello. Can you yeah, see? that's the. Is that the yeah. article? That's the temp. That's like the template. Then uh, this is the article. Let me use. It's on the syllabus. Once you go to the syllabus, right? You click on this uh, class schedule and assignment. Um, this this is the link. Let me copy it so you can see the article that you need to review. Um. I'm gonna paste it here. See if you can, if you can open it for us. So, is it located in the assignment as well, or just uh, on the syllabus? Oh, is 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 um where you where you submit it is an assignment. You can see that the the slot for submitting it. But this is the article itself. Let me see if it, let me see. You know that that is a good question. Let me see if you can find it on the assignments. Uh, this is right here. Okay. And the assignments. Uh, yeah, right here. It's right here. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, it's right here. If you click on it. Um, yeah, I think the article is not there, but this is where you will submit it after you finish the review. Okay. So you see the link to the article from the syllabus. Once you look at, click at the syllabus, click on the uh, class and assignment schedule, scroll all the way down to week nine, where you see the link, they copy the link. Uh, once you copy the link, I, I paste it. Um, so I did it and I found it here, this is right. So I'm gonna do it my own, I'm gonna do a different article and then upload the article and my review, my own review uh, by Saturday. I may put it earlier than that. So you can see what I'm expecting there. I now use it as a guide to do your own. But if you if you already know how to do it, do article review, then you can proceed. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Okay. Oops, I think I closed something. Okay. Now, um, going back to our my announcements and the course home. So like, uh, okay, this is the, yeah, this is my announcement right here with nine activities. So we're still on that announcement. Now, um, the article review. Then next, the other one is the uh, discussion question forum. You already know that. Uh, where to find that? Now, for the discussion question, for the discussion, right, I, I want us to focus on one. So everybody will be responding to that one. And then we know that this is where what we are responding to. Uh, because you get more credit by responding to a fellow student. But if you are post, if you, if the student is uh is doing a different uh, um is responding to different different questions, you don't you may not even know that this somebody have responded and where to post the response. So I recommend that we choose one now that everybody will respond to. This is with nine, type one and type two error. I I recommend this one since it doesn't require uh maths much math. It says yeah, explain the risk and all the. Uh, but I, but it's up to you. There's another one here. Which one do you think you prefer? This one have to do with test of hypothesis, type one and type two errors. This one have to do with analysis of variance, which is the main topic we have today. And um, six sigma, and then type one. So three of them. So with, which of them do you think everyone can respond to? Everyone will focus on that. Uh, what do you think? Uh -huh. 
do we, do we have to do any uh math for the six six sigma or uh we have no, to just, do math just one we choose only one so that all of you will respond to that that one so you don't have to do the rest the all this sigma or whatever as a matter of fact this one this one is this one analysis of variance in your workplace will be easier for you i think right what do you think Yes, that's, that's cool. cool. So let us let everybody respond to only this one. Don't worry about six sigma and the, this one then. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna post this video later? The video for or this one, this video for this uh, this uh, class. This class recording. Yeah, this class yeah. session, right? Are you talking about this? Yeah, you gonna yeah. you gonna post yeah. this video to the uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I will post it here. I'll post it in, a, in the announcement section. Yeah. You know where the announcement section is, right? Yes. Yes, I appreciate so, it. Yeah, I'm going to post it. Uh, when we finish, I will post the video here. This announcement, one of the announcements. So just like I post this week nine activities, yeah, assignments. So now I think I have seen enough. Let us begin. Um, what we have um, today, I mean, this week, is analysis of variance. Analysis of variance. But I like to go to review because in the next week we're going to have a quiz, and that quiz will be on test of hypothesis and analysis of variance. I mean, test of hypothesis last week and then and this week analysis of variance. So I want to. Uh, Give you a, we'll do a flashback to analysis of variance first, and then um, then we now uh, come back to uh, sorry, I want to do a, a flashback to uh, test of hypothesis, and then come back to analysis of variance. Now look at uh, other information. Please always read this announcement. You have I put a lot of information there for you. You know, basically uh, set the stage for you for the uh, for the week. So uh, having said all this, I think we are ready to start. So I opened the um, introduction to the um okay I'm, I'm close this one now okay I opened the introduction to um test of hypothesis test of hypothesis um same I will go through uh one uh one um sample tests and the uh, and in a, and then two sample tests then plus some um, uh proportion tests now you know that last week i put so many videos on how you can do some of them in excel some of them cannot be done in excel like uh one sample test and the one you do in excel actually is the one that if they give you the raw data the raw data you can now do it in excel so if there are two sample tests and they give you the raw data they can you know do it. so watch those videos it will be a very helpful for you but you need to understand the concept though which is why i decided to start with this test of hypothesis generally speaking a statistical hypothesis is a claim a claim about a population parameter and when i say population parameter i'm referring to things like uh, mean um standard deviation variance and the proportion Proportion means percent. Yeah. So these two are the parameter. I call them population parameter because they tell us uh they uh they are the numerical estimates of the population characteristics, kind of. Now, so uh what we do um when we test hypothesis, or uh, somebody makes a claim, then we now test the claim to see if the claim is correct or not. So the process involves these steps. We define the population and then specify the parameter. Like I said, the parameter can be the mean, uh, standard deviation or proportion. So the parameter, this concept, is when you whenever you have parameter, uh, is a number that uh, that describes the population or um, a value that describes the population. Well, if it, most time we're dealing with samples, so for example, we call it statistic. Uh, anyway, then we state the hypothesis. That will be investigated then uh choose the significance level uh we use alpha to represent significance level if you are if your significant level if your alpha is 0 0.05 for example it means that your chance of being wrong 
is 5%. That means you're, you're going to be 95% accurate. If it's 0 0.1, 0 0.10, uh, that means uh, I, I know I know I've seen it is that yeah the the chance that you, you you will commit type one error is only five percent. That's another way of saying it. So this basically the significance level is the probability of committing type one error. I will explain what type one and type two error is you know, as we proceed. Then you collect this uh, select a sample from the population that we use to uh, test the claim. Uh, depending on what you are testing, they collect data from that sample. They perform the test, that means run the calculations, then reach a conclusion. Some, uh, some things that might be addressed um, through hypothesis testing, things like a lot of things actually. Uh, does the medication lower blood pressure for real? You know, lower, lower. so you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies, they make medication that make those claims that this medication can lower blood pressure. How do they know that? They collect large samples. They call it clinical trials. Large sample, they group them into two categories. One sample category will receive the medication over a period of time. The other group will not receive it. They will receive a placebo, something that is not the medication, but looks like it over the period of time. Then they observe them. And then now they can, they can now analyze the results and make that clear. How about this? Does seat belts? Reduce um, severity of injuries caused by accidents. Does the public or customers prefer a certain color in a new line of fashion? All these kind of questions we answer through hypothesis testing. Now, the types of hypothesis we test, we have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now, um, when we say null hypothesis, uh, we are referring to a statement that the value of the population parameter is equal to some claim value, yeah. So, for example, um, we can say that um, uh, let's say that uh, we are testing the uh, uh, the that the average income of teachers in Maryland is sixty five thousand. So, no, no hypothesis might say is that the mean equals sixty five thousand. See, it it assumes a certain uh, value. So for null hypothesis, we use these symbols for null hypothesis. Either we use mean, I mean we use equal, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. There has to be some kind of equality in the null hypothesis. Okay. Now in the alternative hypothesis, like this one here, this one always say the opposite of what the null hypothesis is saying. Say the opposite of that. So for that one, we cannot use the equality symbol or any of the symbols that have equality. We can only use the inequality symbols like this ones. Okay, only that's what you can use in the alternative. Now, uh, which leads us to types of errors we have that we commit when we do uh, hypothesis testing. I mean, it can be any type of error uh, because human beings are prone to error. In Type one error occurs when we reject the null hypothesis when it is true. If, I mean, if it's true and we reject it by mistake, we have committed type one error. Now, type two error, error occurs if we do not reject null hypothesis when it is false. So if the null hypothesis is false, but we do not reject it, we have committed type two error. Now I'm gonna explain, uh, simplify this with a chart. If the null hypothesis is true, and then we reject it. We have committed, um, excuse me, sorry. We have committed a, a type one error. See, true, and we reject it. Reject HO true, and reject HO type one error. One error. Now, if HO is false, and we rejected it, um, it means that we have made the correct decision. Yeah. Now, uh, now if the HO is true and we do not reject it, we have made the correct decision. If the HO is false um, and we um, do not reject it, we committed type two error. 
type 2 error. So this is really, uh, how, uh, you know, this an easier, simplest way of explaining this, uh, this type of errors. Any questions so far? Hello, scholars, any question for me so far? Not so, no. Okay, not so far. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. Now, let me use a real life situation to explain it. Now, let's, I'm gonna use a jury trial, Hyper, you know. Now, in a, you know, in a jury trial, let's say, let's say it's a criminal case, right? There are uh, four possible outcomes. The defendant is guilty. The defendant is innocent. The defendant is convicted. The defendant is acquitted. These are the four possible scenarios there. Now, uh, we, we have our, let's say that our HO is that the defendant is innocent. Another H1 is that the defendant, oh, excuse me, defendant is guilty. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Now, you know, the, uh, the, I think they call them uh, the, the state prosecutor, right? Right? That's what they call those, um, the attorney that represent the state. Am I right? Hello? Hello, guys? You there? Can you answer one more time? <laughs> the attorney that represents the state in a in a court case. Well, I think it's a court a prosecutor, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now the, the prosecutor will come and present the case. The mm -hmm. defendant and the lawyer will present their own case. Now it is now up to the jury, jury to decide uh finally. Now, HO2 means that the defendant is innocent. <clears throat> Excuse me. HO false means that defendant is guilty. Reject HO means convict. Do not reject HO means acquit. Now, if the defendant, if HO is true, which means that the defendant is innocent, and then the jury rejected HO, that means they convicted him, even though he's innocent, then the jury have committed type one error. I know we, we know that this happens. I mean, uh, the recent, um, uh, you know, DNA have actually um, led to the many findings that some 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 people were sent to jail based on witness testimony, but they found out that DNA did not, you know, exonerated them. So you can so that means that this kind of error is possible. Now, if HO, HO is false, that means the defendant is guilty and the jury rejected the HO. That means they convicted the film. Uh, that means they convicted the guilty person. That means they made a correct decision. Okay. Now, um, if the HO is true, that means uh, the defendant is innocent and the jury rejected HO. That means that they acquitted him or her. They have made a correct decision. decision now if the HO is false and then defendant is guilty and then but they acquitted him they have committed type one type two error error any question on this any question no okay good now um <laughs> Now we can now go to the uh, um how to state hypothesis now. How do we state hypothesis? We're very important because if you state the hypothesis the wrong way, it will lead to the wrong conclusion. So how do we state hypothesis? I was I will use an example to illustrate it. He says, state the law and alternative hypothesis for each conjecture. Look at this question here. It says, um that there is such a thing that excuse me, think that expectant mothers, uh, that if expectant mothers use vitamin pills, the birth weight of their babies will increase. The average birth weight of the population is 8.6 pounds. So how do we still happen? So we start by starting writing your HO, 
and H1. Okay. Yeah. Now, remember in the H, it says the average birth weight is, but it says that this researcher is say that if they they take vitamin, the birth weight will increase. That was that is his uh, claim. So I uh, we increase mean that we, we're gonna use in, uh, the symbol greater than, and we can only use it in the alternative. So that means the average weight. Uh, uh, is uh, we increase, and we know that the average weight is 8.6 pounds. So we're gonna have mean, okay, mean will be greater than um 8.6 pounds. Pounds, oh, excuse me, pounds, and that is her claim. Now, why did we put it in the uh alternative? Because we can only use we increase. We can only use this symbol in the alternative. We can't use it in null. And they they both say the opposite of each other. So the opposite of this would now be in the null would now be that mean is less than 8.6 pounds. But we cannot use the symbol less than in the um no, we can only use less than or equal to. So we're gonna use. Uh, because the null hypothesis have, must have some kind of equality symbol, 8.6 pounds. And that's that. We have to we have to take the hypothesis for that. Any question on this? No. Okay, good. Alternative, some books might say uh I have a question. To, I have huh? a question. Yes, yes, ma'am. So the the bottom one, the bottom one is since it's stating what you said that remember average it's... because it has the average. Yeah, because why... have, yeah, it was have the average. Yes, that's why you are using the symbol mean. Mm -hmm. So and the this uh, researcher uh, researcher is claiming that it will increase. We increase means greater than, and we can only use greater than symbol in the alternative hypothesis. So only the HO is the null. The HO is always the null, yes. It's always the null. Yeah, mm -hmm. H1 is always the alternative, yeah. Some books some, some books will say HO for null and use HA for alternative. Some books write it that way. Okay. Hmm. Alternative, you can even study it this way. So, like some books might say um the same thing, except that they, some books use equal sign for the null all the time. Both of them are correct. See? In that way. Because no one must have some kind of equality symbol on it. So that would be incorrect based no, on the statement. This, it would have to be greater. That, this, both, both of them are correct. Oh, okay. Okay. Because this one has some some equality equality. This is less than or equal to. So the alternate no one must have some kind of equality there. Mm -hmm. Less than or equal to or just equal to, you know. Okay. Hmm. Got it. I recommend you use I recommend you use this one. It's more more precise than this one. Thank you. You're welcome. Now let's look at another one. It says an engineer um claimed that uh, engineer claimed that um the mean number of defects can be decreased can be decreased. Look at look at the keyword right there. Can be decreased. In a manufacturing process for making for compact disc by using robots instead of human beings uh, for the task. The mean number of defective discs per thousand is 18. Okay. Now um let's do the hypothesis. Just write down HO, no hypothesis, and H1 alternative hypothesis. Then let's start. We this can be decreased. Decrease means less than, and we can only use less than in the alternate, uh, alternatives. And that is for the average, and he said that the average, the mean number of defective is 1,000. The 1,000 is 18. So we're gonna have um, that the mean, uh, he, said that, he said that when they use a robot, it will decrease, that means less than 18. 
And that is oh, 18. And that is his claim. The alternative will be mean greater than 18. But we, uh, sorry, the norm will now become, norm and alternative, they always say the opposite of each other. So that means the norm will be mean greater than 18. But we can use greater than symbol in the norm. We can only use greater than or equal to. In that case, uh, mean is greater than or equal to 18. And that is it. Now, claim can also be in the null. It depends on how the equation is, is worded. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Then I look at the um another example. A psychologist. Um before we I, I go to that example, I want to show, I want to uh, say something here. If you look at the claim, see that the, this symbol is pointing to the right. Because of that, we call it right tailed, right tailed test. Okay. If you look at this other one, it's pointing the claim. Under the claim, the symbol is pointing to the left. You can call it a left tailed test. I will explain what this these stairs mean in a, in a few minutes. Now look at this one. It says here, um, it says that a psychologist feel that playing soft music during a test will change the results uh, of the test. So we change. It doesn't say whether it will increase or decrease. It just say we change. We'll change the results. So we will change the results. Okay. Now, the psychology is not sure whether the grade will be higher or lower. All he knows that it will be changed. In the past, the mean score is 73. So you have your HO, H1, H1. Okay. Now, we'll change the results. I mean, it can be less than or greater than. So what we're going to do is, we can, um, so it's not equal, it's not equal. You, you see, I can be less than or greater than. So what we see we're gonna use is mean, um, not equal to 73. And that is a claim. Okay. Mm. And H1, we say the opposite, which is that mean is equal to mean equal to some three. Okay. Now in this case, if you look at the claim, it's a not equal to that means it can be less than or equal to. So it's two sides. And we call it two third test. Test. So if you run, if you run this test, it's gonna be a two third test. Okay. Now, um, now look at the, what of if it's a proportion like this one? It said at least about five percent of senior citizens were hearing aids. At least means greater than or equal to. And we can only use that in the, in the null. Sorry, yeah, in the null hypothesis. But this time around, it is percent. So we're gonna use p greater than or equal to. I'm going to make it a P. Uh, P is greater than or equal. It's a, it's a proportion. Equals about 5%. And that is where our claim lies. Because it says here, at least, at least for 5% means greater than or equal to. And we can only use this symbol in the mouth. So the alternative is now saying, say P is less than or equal to, but you cannot use less than or equal to symbol in the alternative. So you cannot use less than, uh, less than uh, in the alternatives, less than forty five percent. Okay. Um. So look at another one that is proportion. It says more than seventy percent 
of college employees contribute to the United Fund. So we got their HO and H1. Oh, excuse me, H1. So more than, more than 70%, more than means greater than. And you can only use greater than um in the uh alternative. So, and since this is a percent, which is a proportion, that P more than is a P greater than uh 70%. That's their claim. Yeah. Then repeat the same thing, but this time around, um, um, we have the opposite, which is P less than 70%, but we cannot use less than in the no, we can only use less than or equal to. So you gotta be P less than or equal to 70%. Okay. Then last example I'll give here. Uh, we're gonna be um that um one example on this before we now go to the actual uh testing hypothesis. Now we have um here I said the average income of accountants is fifty one thousand four and seven. Say is is means equal. Equal to what I mean is. So we're gonna so, so we can study the hypothesis H O and H1. Okay. Is that means equal. That means the average. We're gonna use it here. This time around the claim is on the um the claim is on um on the on the norm. So we got fifty one thousand four ninety seven. That is our claim right there. Okay, and H um H will not be the opposite. Mean is not equal. To. It's not equal to uh fifty one thousand four ninety seven. So you, you might try uh, this last one, this one here as a practice. Let's move on to the next thing. Some of the terms we use in hypothesis testing. Yeah, first term we use here is the level of significance, which is alpha. The symbol for that is alpha. So you basically, um, the level of significant level is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. So in that means that it is the probability of committing type one error. So if the alpha is 0 0.01, for example, that is one percent, mean that your chance of committing type one error is one percent. So your result, the chance that it, uh, the probability that it, 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 you have you committed an error is only one percent. If it's 0 0.015, that means five percent. Now critical region is another name for rejection region, a critical region right here. So if your answer falls in the critical region, you reject. Otherwise, you don't reject. Now we have what we call p-value that we can also use for making decision. We we'll come to that. Uh, critical region is the region. So the critical value is the value that you get, just like the cutoff value that we use to decide whether to reject or not. If your answer is bigger than the critical value, you reject. If it's less than critical value, or equal to the critical value, you don't reject. Then two third tests. I have already explained something like that, but you have it here. See, if you look at the diagram, you will see why it is called the two third test. You can see the the bell curve. So if the, this is the if your answer falls in this yellow place, yellow region, don't reject. But if your answer falls in either of this tail, we call this a tail. You can see the critical region here. You can see the critical value right here. If your answer falls in this blue region, you reject, or this other blue, the left blue region, you reject. Same thing with here. If you answer it for in this area, you reject. If it falls here, you don't reject. This one is a le uh, left third test. And for right third test, 
If your answer falls here, you don't reject, but if it falls in the critical region, reject. Now, having said that, we are now ready to um, do what is called Z-test for the mean for one sample. This, there are two methods, the traditional method and the PVAL method. I will show you both methods. I will solve one traditional method and one PVAL method. But for the traditional method, the first thing is to state the hypothesis. So I, that's why I started by showing you how to state hypothesis correctly. You state the hypothesis and then identify the claim, um, find the critical value from the appropriate table, uh, compute test value, then make the decision to reject or not to reject, then summarize your results. Now, the decision to reject is reject the null hypothesis if the calculated value is equal to or exceed the critical value. So now, um. Like I said, there are some of that you can do some of them in, a, in Excel if you are giving the raw data. But if you're not giving, if you are giving a summary statistics, you can use the formula method. So let's see. Excel does for one sample test, Excel doesn't have the for, uh, you can do the one sample test in Excel. So what you can do is is to trick Excel, do a trick on Excel to make it feel that it is doing two sample tests using the raw data, then do the test and then make some changes you get the you know get the results anyway this is a test statistic here z equals um x bar minus mean divided by the standard deviation over square root of n the s bar represents the sample mean the mu represents the population mean delta represents the uh, population standard deviation and n is the sample size are you guys still there Hello? Yes. Any question for me so far? We're still here, sir. Okay. You're tired already. We just we we just got here. <laughs> yeah. Your voice sound tired. Oh no, I'm not. You sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the test statistics. So let's begin. Uh, let's start with this question. It says, um, a researcher um says in one minute, uh, uh, for some reason, this when I come to this page, my cursor was not uh, started acting out. <laughs> so a researcher um, reported that the average salary of assistant professors in the year 1997 is more than uh, 42,000. See, more than, see, more than, this is the key word right there, more than 42,000. A sample of 30 assistant professors has a mean salary of 43,260. At alpha 0.05, test the claim that the assistant professors earn more than 42,000 a year in 1997. The standard deviation of the population is 5,230. Now, somebody might say, okay, he's making a claim that their salary is 42,000. And they got a sample of 30 of them, and the average salary is for 3,260, which is bigger than 42. So, why are you doing the test already? You already know that it's bigger. Well, we still have to do the test because this is only from 30 assistant professors. We have thousands of 30 assistant professors. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this there are some community colleges, right, that pay assistant professors 60,000 a year. There are some that pay them 80,000 a year. Depend on the county or the city or, you know, uh, there are some uh, um, places that they pay them even more than that. <laughs> the universities pay them 100,000 100, a year. Like um, John Hopkins, I know, university might pay more up to 90, that's time purposes, or 80. So, we cannot use the uh, only salary uh, with 30. So we still need to uh, uh, do the test because also they give us the population standard division two as um, uh, 5,230. So we still need to do the test. The first thing is to, of course, to state the hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And the first thing to do, um, H, we say that 
this this research claim that the average salary of assistant professors in 1997 is more than more than means greater than. So you gotta be mean greater than. Or we cannot use greater than uh symbol in the norm. So you gotta be H O H one mean greater than uh forty two thousand. And that is our claim right there. Okay. And HO will be the opposite. Uh, that the mean is less than, but we cannot use less than symbol here. So we cannot use mean less than or equal to mean, okay, uh, less than or equal to 42,000. You can see the screen very well, right? Yes. Very good, very good. Okay. And the alpha is 0 0.05. That is our significant level, 0 0.05. Now, if you look at the claim, you can see that the symbol by the side of the claim is pointing to the right. So this means that this is a, a right paired test. So next thing is to find a critical value. Uh, so critical value. Uh, critical value. Value. Equals. Now, um, let us let me draw the chart so you can see how the chart works. It goes here. Anyway, because this is um, I, I've I've shown you the the, the, the diagrams. Uh, this, they look like a bell curve and they are they are at the tails. So when they are at the tails, you subtract uh from 0.5. There's a table we can use to get the critical value. It is called a table of normal distribution. Let me show you the table. It's right here. Now, this table, there are two of them actually. Two types. This one is one. I mean, I, I recommend you use this one. You can also get it from using Excel, uh, the critical value for uh, um for a Z test. There is a, um, give me one minute. Uh, I think it's, let me see if I have it at the end. The Excel formula for that. At the end. I'll find that out. Okay, we're here. Anyway, the critical value. So if you're using, if you're using this table, um, this table here, um, here it is called. Okay, let me see if I can get it from here. It's called the uh, normal distribution table. Can you see the table? Yes. Hello, guys. Yes, we can see the table. Oh, good, good. So it's, it's called a, it's a standard normal distribution. So this is the table. To get a critical value, you use from is is supply say 0.5, but well, it's said at alpha. Is 0.5. Okay. I'm sorry, 0 0.05. Uh this um this chart here. I want to show you something before I, I go. This chart here we have oh uh, let me put it this way. Let me, let me draw it and explain something to you. It goes like this, right? You have zero at the center. Okay. So you have um we call it the bear curve. Yeah, it turns here. Goes like this, go like that. Like that. They have a center line that goes like this. No, so half of it is 0. 0.5. This is 0. 0.5. This half is 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. So the total area is, is um that area is uh one. Now, um there's a there's this thing. If you're using this table, there's this um let me bring it up. There's this uh chart, procedure chart 
that um, can help you to decide. Okay, procedure chart is right here. So you can see this is the cover I just drew. So whenever it's at the left side, like see this this side, I mean, whenever it's at, at the tail or this tail, you look up the z value to get the area, then subtract the area from 0.5. Because half of this is 0 0.5, half of this is 0 0.5. So if you're looking for only this area, that means and there you have half of this. And you're looking for only semi sub subtract it from uh, from 0 0.5, and you get the value of this area. So whatever value you get from the table, subtract from 0.5 to get this value. So um going back to our our this thing, I'll close some of this. So um now we have this uh the problem we are solving. We are looking for the critical value. So you're gonna do 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Minus 0 0.05, and that will give us 0 0.5. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05, 2.45. Let me write it down. Um, 0 0.45, 0, 0. So we got 0 0.4500. Zero zero. Then we have, um, look for this on the table. So we go to the table. Um, the table is right here. Look, for, look inside the table for, for 0.4500. Zero zero. So um, I saw 0.4495. And four five zero five. I didn't see uh point four five zero zero exactly, but I see two numbers that are closest to it. And then these are the two of them right here. This one here, if you subtract it, four five zero five minus four five zero zero. If you see, if you see on the calculator, that um. Four five zero five minus. I mean, if you if you ignore the decimal point, four five zero zero is five points away from it. And if you try the other one, which is uh, the other number, which is um, four four nine five. Okay. If you have, okay, um, four five zero zero, ignoring the decimal point minus. Four nine five five. Sorry, I, I got, got four nine five five minus um minus four four nine five. Sorry, four four nine five. Okay, four four nine five. Four four nine five is five points. So both of them are five points. They are equally close to it. When they are equally close, choose the bigger one, which is this one here. And when you follow it to the left, see 1.6. When you follow it up, five. See so one point, follow it all the way to the left. See, it corresponds to Z of 1.6. You follow it up, five. So it's 1.65. So the critical value is 1.65. 1.65. So the first thing to do again, to tell you this is to find the H and no hypothesis, the hypothesis and identify a claim. Uh, decide whether it's right there or left there or two thirds. Then find a critical value. Once we have done this, we are ready to do the test. So let us do the test now. We are told that the um that the, the this professor says that is um sorry this uh, researcher said that the average salary of uh Professors is for two thousand, so that means for the population is for two thousand. So that means that mean um mean is for the two thousand mean um equals 
for the 2000. Okay, now he selected a sample of um, 30 assistant professors. That means N equals 30 assistant professors. And for that type of sample, you see that the sample mean for that is 43,260. Now, I can get a character for sample for a sample mean, which is X bar. See, 43,260. So I'm going to get the character from uh, the other workbook. So I'm going to get it from here. Uh, X bar, that's where I, that's one that can give me X bar value. To have X bar is um X bar. Make it bigger. Make it make it bigger so you can see it better. Well. It's 618. Okay, good. That's X bar right here. Equals for the 3260. So I'm going to copy it and paste it in the main workbook. Okay. For 3,260. For a sample of assistant professors, say, um, for 3,260. Then the standard deviation is 5,230. So the part for the population standard deviation Delta is a symbol for standard deviation equals 5,260. I'm going to correct this. Say delta. Maybe delta. That's for standard deviation. So with having getting all this information, we are, we are now ready to run the test. Remember that the formula is um, Z equals the X bar minus mean divided by the standard deviation over square root of N. So we have our values for mean population mean, sample size, sample mean, and standard deviation. So let's go and put them in the formula and get our answer, okay? So let me write them down and then we can go and put them in. Mu is 42,000. Uh, we have that this, the N is 30 and delta standard deviation is uh, 5,230. So that Z equals um let's go and do it yeah, let's go and do it so this place not get me um um have me put the formula allow me to put the formula so i'm gonna get the formula from the other, whatever book and then we can copy it and paste it there uh z equals um we have that's uh, have x bar x bar okay minus mean uh which is mu okay divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n the standard deviation is right here by the square root of n of n okay which is equal to now we we'll start putting our numbers Remember that our numbers are here. So I wrote them down. So we just go and put them in there. So we have, taking you back, you're going to be, for the X bar, we have 43,260 minus minus 42,000 divided by standard deviation over the square root of N. Uh, the standard deviation is uh, 5230 but the square root of n and n is 30. We can now um go and put this in the calculator, get our answer. So let me write it down so we can go and put it in the calculator. We have 43,260 and that's 42,000 divided by the 5230 over the square root of 30. Let's go and put it in the calculator and get our answer. I'll have okay. Um for the three thousand. Uh, uh, two sixteen. Okay. Minus 
we got 42,000 divided by standard deviation of 5230 over the square root of 30. That gives us 1.32, 1.32 around that, 1.32. So we're going to put it right here, 1.32. And we're gonna copy this and paste it in our main workbook. Okay. Um, we have run the test, and this is our result. Okay. Now, let us make a decision. Decision time. Decision. Okay. The critical value. Critical value, value we get, which is Z critical equals, uh, we have, remember we got it here as uh, 1.65, see, 1.65. So it has 1.65. Um, then the, um, the, um, Calculated value, calculated V, calculated, calculated um, Z, we got it as, our answer was 1.32. Okay. Now, um, decision. It says here, um, if the, if you remember uh, what I said, the decision criteria, I think I wrote it down somewhere somewhere. Yep. Reject the null hypothesis if and only if the calculated value is equal to or exceed the critical value. In this case, it is not. It does not. Answer is that 1.32, critical value 1.65. So our answer is less than the critical value. So the answer will now, now become do not, do not reject HO because the calculated, calculated Z of 1.32 is less than the critical value, value of 1.65. See, so you don't reject. So that means we did not reject my hypothesis. That means this claim is not correct. We didn't reject it. That means this claim is not correct. So we can conclude now. Conclusion says there is insufficient um there's not enough evidence. to support the claim claim that um that the claim the claim was that the uh the average salary of a uh, system professor is in 1997 is for the 2000 so there wasn't and since we did not reject no hypothesis that means this claim is not correct so we have insufficient evidence uh that the that is for two thousand. Now, um, and we we can even show this, illustrate this, uh, um, in a form of diagram. This is the our this is our um, this is what our critical region says one point six five. So here we should say that this place is one point six five, and then we can insert this. So look at this. Okay, to represent 1.65, because that means it falls, and this is the rejection region right there. So I'm going to shed it. So I can't know how to shed it with color, so I'm going to use it to shed it. Okay, I'm shedding it. You can see. Right there. 
Okay. All right. So now, when it, this this is the acceptance region right here. Accept. Okay. Then it goes here. You see the reject. Reject. Okay. So anything that falls in this shaded region, reject it. And then our answer was 1.35, right? 1.31, 1.31. We does not fall in this region. It's far below. Like they say, this is the answer where you have an answer, 1.31. Third here, see? So it's why it's four. Well, this one is 1.6. So the answer for in the acceptance region. That's why we did not reject. Any, any question on this? Not so far, no. Okay, good, good. Now, that is basically what it is. Um, now, they, when they give you summary statistics like this, um, you can just use the formula. And this table, I want to say something about this table. There are two types of tables. The one that's cumulative, and what the, and this one, if you're using this one, I uh, use this method that I showed you, and you get the answer correct. Sometimes they might ask you to get the answer. You they might ask you to use p-value instead of uh, uh traditional method. They might ask you to use the p-value method. But if I do that, I want to show you um how you can do this uh, using a um let's say uh Excel to do to test of hypothesis like this. Now let's try this one. It says a motorist claims that the South Borough Police issue that the South Borough Police issue an average of 60 speeding tickets per day. Uh, this data showed the number of speeding tickets issued each day for a period of one month. Let me make it uh, bigger. So if I see, yeah, this is not big enough. Okay. Let me make it big enough. So I'm gonna uh, move it down. Yeah. Ah, it's gonna allow me to do that. So let me see. Okay. That is the question right here. So if you are given a, a raw data, then you can use Excel to get it. But um, unfortunately, the, the Excel doesn't have a way of testing uh, one factor, uh, one, one sample test, doing, doing one sample test. So we, what we do is we trick Excel into doing it, and Excel will now um, do it. We use what we call the dummy variable to do that. So look at this question here. Um, it says, a motorist claimed that cyber police issue and are on average 60 speeding tickets per day. See, the issue is 60 speeding, uh, speeding tickets per day, an average of 60 of them. These data show the number of speeding tickets issued each day for a period of one month. As soon as the standard deviation is, so they give you the raw data. Without, I mean, when they give you a summary statistics like this, like the one we did before, this one, where they give you the, they give you the mean and the standard deviation and the other things. You cannot do it in Excel. In, in any case, Excel don't do one sample test anyway. But if they give you a uh, summary uh, uh, raw data like this one here, you might use it to tri trick Excel into doing the test for you. It says, is there enough evidence to reject the motorist claim? The motorist claim that um, the cyber police issue an average of 50 city student tickets per day. So that means um, our HO and H1. Let me say solution. Yeah. I have HO and H1. HO and H1. Yeah. So that the issue on average, it didn't say greater than or equal to. So that means is a is a uh it means that it is gonna be equal so it will be h o 
mean is equal to um 60 print tickets 60 that's our claim right there okay then h1 gonna be mean not equal to 50 mean um not equal to 60 yeah not equal to 60 and our alpha is 0 0.05. That is our significant level. It's 0 0.05. So this is a um this is a two-tailed test because it is equal to and not equal to. So is this a, a two-tailed test? A two um third test. Okay. So next thing is to put these numbers in a cell. So I have to copy them down. Um, so uh, let, me, let me put them in Excel. I have, I want to write them down. Uh, 72, 83, 60, 58. I got 45. 26, 56, 63, 36, yeah. 36, 60, um, 64, 49. So I got um, 68, 72, um, 68 again, 63. And I got this 69, uh, 58, 42, um, 75. Okay, and I got 71, 87, 57, 42, I got 57, 48, 57, 63. I got 60, 69, 60, and 59. So I'm going to go and put all this in Excel. It's all in Excel. So we can get our price and get it from Excel. So I got um seventy two eighty three sixty fifty eight uh, forty five twenty six fifty six sixty three and I got um. 36, 60, 64, 49. And I got, um, make sure I've seen all this. You guys are seeing this, right? Yes. Hello? Hello? We're here, we're listening. Okay. <laughs> Number two. You haven't you haven't lost me yet. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up. Okay. But good. I'm, I'm gonna have to watch this over a couple times. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have sixty nine. Um. Eight. For the two. Seventy five. I got 71, uh, 87, 62, 42. I got 57 again, 48, uh, 57, 63. I got 60. 
59. Okay, how are the numbers in? So, um, but now that like I said, um, I said it doesn't have a can do the one sample test, uh, you know, and it doesn't have a way of doing it. So, what we do with it can, um, use dummy variable here. I can use dot two zero as a dummy variable. Call it dummy variable. Dummy variable and zero. So the cell will now I'm tricking, I'm tricking the cell to make him think that I'm doing two tests. Remember this this is not, this things represent uh this represent the number of spinning tickets. Spinning ticket with the average. So uh, so I'm gonna put this as spinning ticket. Say spinning ticket. Spinning ticket. Okay, excuse me. Ticket. They gave them. They gave each day. And I'm gonna use dumb dummy. So Excel, I'm tricking Excel to think that I have some, there's something here when there's nothing. So that will make it to do it as a two tail test, and then I'm gonna remove the. Uh, some of those, uh, some, some values after the test is over. So now, I'm to do this test. I will um go to data, um, data analysis. Then um use um. I still have okay Z test. See, you can see this um. Has only the, uh two sample, see Z test two sample means see right here. So I'm gonna choose a Z test for two sample mean. I'm gonna click um. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sharing the close. Can you can you see this? No, we can only see uh you and our names. Okay, how about this one? Yes, you can see that. So you, you know how I put this in, I brought this up, right? I can do it again if you want. Let me do it again. Yeah, no, we weren't able to see how um, you... how's it again? We weren't able to see how you got to that dialog box. Can okay, you Okay, let, let me do it again then. Click on data, right? Here. Can you see my hand? Yes, we can. Then go to on the right, extreme right. You can see where you have, where you have data analysis. Click on that. This will pop up. Can you see this box? Yes, we can see it. Then you can see where you have Z test for two sample means. I chose that because I put a dummy variable here to make Excel think that it is two sample means. Then I click OK. Can you see this one? Yes, we can. Good. Now, um, then for the first variable, we have the spinning tickets. Okay. Like there. For the second variable, we have the dummy variable. Have the dummy variable. Okay. Um, then. I put the size difference um, is zero. So I'm going to type zero here. Then is variance known? Um, we have um, unknown variance. We don't have, we don't, it, it, the equation doesn't mention, uh, it doesn't mention any variance. I think this is it right here. What is it right here? It doesn't mention any variance. Just standard, just set standard deviation. So, uh, is variance known? Uh, now, levels, because I, I checked, I, I, when I was uh, putting it together, I, I, um, I checked, I included the spinning tickets, their name, type, so I'm gonna check the levels. And it's, they say to use um, alpha, Point zero five. So I'm gonna put point zero five here. Okay. Zero point zero five here. 
So it's easy already by the by default. And then the output range um, here is I'm gonna put it on this side. Hopefully it will give us the result. Uh, if done, then you know that except okay. Two sample mean balance must be a number. Okay, better than that's okay. Okay, okay. So that means what is uh, variance? Now, it didn't give us the variance here. So, um, variance uh, is, it gives us a standard deviation of 13.42. So, the variance is unknown, but since I'm going to put zeros there, zero, zero. We don't know, we don't know the variance. Let me see if that works. Zero variance. Put zero and zero. Uh, uh, this this is. Let me put. Um, okay. Let me see if I can get. I will start. Oh, let me get the variance from this. I can get the. You can get the variance from for this one here. Variance. Okay. Equals. Uh, v a r. Dot s. Okay, and get the variance here. Get this variance here. Okay, 180. For this one, you gotta be zero because it's a dummy. So you gotta be zero. Okay, that'll help us. Let's start off afresh then. Data. Okay. That data, data analysis, I'm gonna click on it again. So Z test, okay. And I get all this, this one here. Um, this will be okay. I'll have it already. Okay, good. I'll have it already here. You have this already. Okay. The variance um of the size mean is zero, happen to be zero. Then you have um variance of Okay, let me go down. Uh, it's closing. I think it's I think you got it at one eight. Let me like, hold on, let me let me uh start all over. I think we got it at one eight. Let me write it down one eighty point. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. One eighty point two zero. Okay, that, that should be it. So data. Data analysis, we have all those things already. We just need to put the variance. 180.20. Then for this one, variance is zero. So I'm going to put zero here. And then to give us the result, the output, I want the output to be here. OK. OK. Two must for two, for two must be a number greater. Okay, so but don't like that. This um the um Esther doesn't have really the the way of doing this uh, one sample test. So that's why you're giving us all this trouble. That's the main thing. So like, I'm I'm gonna leave it at, at like that. But like I'm, I'm gonna explain to you how you can uh, do it uh, using a calculator. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, if it's a two sample test, it will give us the results. But uh, uh, some reason it doesn't know how it doesn't um doesn't um have a way of doing it in Excel. And that's why. But so that's the way, but the way you can trick it. Sometimes when it, I, I apply this trick, sometimes it works. But today it didn't work today. <laughs> okay. Now, so what you gotta do now is find the mean for this. The, we already have a standard deviation given to us. So you can use it to test this claim. So I'm gonna um find the mean. Um mean will be we have it already in the Excel. So let's find the mean right there. Mean um in Excel, the mean will be mean uh equals average. And I copy all these numbers in. Okay. 59.93. 
mean is 59, X bar is 59.93. Uh, some uh, population mean, he didn't mention anything about population mean here. Let me see. Yep. We say the problem is a he said that a motorist claim that the suburb police issue an average of on a, of 60 spending tickets per day. So their meal, uh population meal will be 60. So let me write it down there. Uh, but before we can do remember we have uh, to do this like we did on this first one. If you remember, we, we stayed hypothesis. We still have to then identify our claim, get our critical value. So let's get a critical value for this one first. And then I can start putting those numbers in. So the critical value, this is two third critical value. Critical value. Value. And this is two third tests. So because it's two side, it's two side. Uh, how do I know that? Because it's equal and not equal to. Okay. Equal. So that means uh, Z, we're going to use Z alpha. Instead of Z alpha, we're going to use Z alpha over 2. Uh, alpha over 2. Plus 2 tails. Now, there are a shortcut I use when it is 2 tails. The shortcut. Remember, in a percent, uh, 0 0.05 means 5%. That means your chance of being wrong is 5%. So if it's a, if it's a 1 tail, yeah, left tail or right tail, I can just I can just do uh 0. 0.5 minus the alpha here, get this number, then look for it on the table of normal distribution to get my critical value. But when it's two tails, I mean two sides, that this shortcut formula I use uh, that, that work 100 percent on the left side, 100 percent on the right side, I mean it's 200. I can just use uh, ninth, this uh, if the alpha is uh five percent, that means your chance of being right. Your chance of being correct is 90, 95%, but your chance of being wrong is 5%. So I can just do 95 over 200. You know, a percent is uh, 100, 100, 100, but because there are two sides, I mean, over 200. That will give me a number. That will, this is a shortcut method of finding it. Uh, 95 over 200, I can get it from the calculator. 95, 95. Divided by 200. It gave me 0 0.475. Um, I got 0 0.475. 0 0.5, which I, I can now find on the table of normal distribution. Uh, table of normal distribution is this one here. Um, here it says uh, 475. Let me look at the number again. It is 0 0.4750. So on the table, you're going to see 0 0.4750 here. 0 0.47. I'm lucky this time. I found exactly 0 0.475. Can you see it, guys? Hello? Hello, can you see the 0 0.4750 here? Can you? Yes. We so can if see you pull it to the left, you're going to see 1.9. If you follow it up, six. So that means our answer will be one point nine six, because it is two sides. You're gonna be plus or minus. Uh plus or minus. Uh one point nine six. Okay, because it's two thirds. One point nine six. See, one point nine. One point nine. Please the left. One point nine six. Is two tails 1.96. So if you're, if you're on the left side, you're gonna be negative negative 1.96. If on the right side, you're gonna be positive 1.96. Now we are ready to run the test. Now, um, it says that this motor is claimed that the South Border Police Station issue an on average 50 some 60 speeding tickets. On average, 60. So that means our mean uh population mean is. 60. Now, for the sample mean, we, we have these numbers in the in the Excel. So, we, and we got the, uh, I, I got the mean from Excel right here. I see the mean, 59.93. 
round it. You know, you know, you know uh, if you want to round it, um, see, 59.93. I wrote it down, 59. So I'm going I'm gonna go over there and put 59.93. Uh, 59.9. So X bar. Now I can't get the character for X bar here. So I'm going to get it from this other work, workbook. Uh, this one on the side. I got um, X bar X bar equals 59.93. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Okay. Now, he selected a sample of, um, he said, the data below show the number of speeding tickets each day for a period of one month. How many of them? Four in each case. Four, 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 four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four times seven. Four times seven is 28. 29, 30. So our N is 30. So it's because it's more N. Yeah. 30, right? Am I right or wrong? Hello, guys. Hello. You there? Yes, we're here. I hope you're not asleep. You sleeping already? No, I'm up. But I was going to ask you when we finish oh. the album, can we have like a five minute break? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Once we finish this one, we'll have a five minute break. And then when we come back, we'll do analysis of variance. That one will not take time. And I'll let you go, OK? Okay, so mm -hmm. we won't break right now. No, no, wait, let's finish this one. Oh, we're gonna finish this first. Okay, yeah, got it. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So now we have. Uh, so now we have all the information we need to run the test. Um, so let me write them down. N equals thirty. Um, then delta equals that's standard division is thirteen point four two. So let us run our test. I'm gonna go over there and put it on the formula. Um. Okay, we have um we have the um putting on the on the um other workbook where we can get it uh get that kind of characters and formula z becomes equals as usual sample mean okay which is s bar minus population mean of this divided by standard deviation of delta for the square root of n of n and that will give us um equals we have okay and a sample mean if you remember we have a num our numbers here already we have them here. So mu is 60, S by 59.3, N is 30. The standard division of delta is 13.42. Let's go and put them in and get them from the calculator. We have um six uh 59 point .93 minus population mean of 60 uh divided by standard deviation of um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, of um, 13.42 over the square root of 30. Okay. That gives us, let me write it, let me write it down so we can figure them out. Z equals uh, 59.93 minus 60. Divided by 13.42 over the square root of 30. Let's go and put it in the calculator, see what it gives us. So you have um our calculator right here. So we got um 59.93. Okay. Uh minus 60 divided by, oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> divided by the um 
13.42 over the square root of 30. Negative 0 0.03. Let is 0 0.03. Yeah. Let me look at it again. Negative 0 0.03. Okay. Negative 0 0.03. So let's put it right there. We'll copy this and paste it um under this place. Okay. Now uh, we can make our decision. Decision. Yeah, the crit, uh, um, critical value, the critical value um, will be critical value, value uh, equals, we got as, now because our answer is negative, we'll be considering the negative side only. You're gonna be, um, um, Negative one point nine six. Negative one point nine six. Now, um, you know, in algebra, uh, we say that uh, this even this one is bigger than the, this one that is smaller because it's negative. It's bigger than this. So, whenever it's negative, only always consider the absolute value. Absolute value. So, absolute value of that ABS. Absolute this value of negative one point nine six is. Let's put it to 1.96. You remember absolute value from your, from your algebra class? Then calculate the value. This is a critical value, which is Z alpha over 2, uh, alpha over 2. Is that. Then calculate the value. Calculate Z. Z. Again, we use our absolute value. Absolute, so that, we, so that we have only positive answers. Okay, absolute negative 0 0.03 give us 0 0.03. So, again, uh, the claim was that, um, remember, the claim was that it was claimed that the um, South Border Police issue on average of 60, 60 uh, speeding tickets per day, and that is his claim right here. Okay, now, now our decisions, if you look at our decision here, it says the, the criteria is that if your answer, calculate the answer is less than the critical value, you don't reject HO. So again, it says, but if it's bigger than the critical value, you reject. Do not, not reject HO because, um, they calculated Z of 0 0.03. Of course, you know it's, it's, you know it's negative 0 0.03. Uh, is less than of negative 0 0.03. Is less than uh, the critical value of negative uh, 1.96. So now our final decision, uh, conclusion now becomes, conclusion becomes um, conclusion. Maybe. Now, we did not reject this. We did not reject this. That means the claim is correct. So you can say that there is sufficient evidence. There is sufficient evidence uh, to support the claim. Claim that um, that the um. That the, that the South Borough Police 
issue on average 60 spinning tickets uh, per day. That's a conclusion. Okay. Now, any question on this? Hello, guys. Um, I'm I, I'm probably gonna have to watch it a couple times. But if I ha have a question after I watch it, then I'll definitely let you know, sir. Okay, good. I get it for the most part, though, I understand. I was following you. Okay, very good, very good. So let us take a short break. We we we'll come back here at ten minutes break. We resume at seven twenty-five. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 725, and then we'll come back and finish up. I want to show you how to do it with Z value and P value method, then we'll do that. And, and, and Amiba is easy because you can do that with Excel. Enjoy your break. I'll see you back here at 725. Okay. Let me see.
Hello guys, are you back? Yes. Okay, Sorry. good. Yes, I'm back. Okay, good. Excellent. Now let us um and that's this another one method that we can we call a Z, Z test for the mean using the word second method, which is called a p value method. P value method. Usually most uh, Excel give you the p value method, but we know that um I mean give you the value for p I mean the p value by default. But uh, like I said, Excel doesn't have a way of testing, uh, one hyp uh, doing hypothesis testing for one one population, yeah, one sample test. I mean, to say one population, one sample test. So it, it, we can get it by, uh, you know, using the, the calculator method, manual method. Now, p value means probability value, and the same process follows. You state hypothesis and identify the claim, compute the test value, find the p value. Make decision. So in this case, you don't use this. You don't use critical value. You use the p value. So and the decision criteria is, if the p value is less than or equal to alpha, reject no hypothesis. If the p value is greater than alpha, do not reject a hypothesis. Let's try one example of that, and then I will take you to um, uh, when they, when when you have two population means. Um, um, okay, let's see. T, I will take what are the t, t, Z tests. I will now, after this, I will explain the Z test how to do it. Um, some of the chapter readings I gave you last week was about 
T, uh, Z test and T, all the tests. So you can read those one up. But I want to show you how to do the um the pival method for Z tests. You have um say that a researcher wishes to test the claim that the average age of lifeguards lifeguard in Ocean City. You can see the screen, right? Guys, you can see the screen? Hello? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good, good. So it's 24 years. So she selected a sample of 36 lifeguards and find the sample mean to be 24.7 years with a standard deviation of two years. Is there evidence to support this claim at alpha 0 0.05? Remember that his, his claim was that the average age is greater than 24 years. Greater than, that means you're going to use, to state the hypothesis, you're going to use the symbol greater. And that symbol can only be used in the alternative. H1 is going to be mean uh, greater than uh, to four years. And that is his claim. Claim. And the, the no hypothesis, which always say the opposite, you're going to be mean less than 24 years. However, because we cannot use the less than symbol in no hypothesis, we can only use less than or equal to symbol. We're going to use it like that, 24 years. Okay. Okay. And our alpha here is 0 0.05. Now, um, let us uh, list the value. Say that, that the mean is greater than 24 years. So let's have our summary statistics here. Have mean, mean, um, equals as the population mean 24 years. Then he selected a sample of 36 lifeguards. So n equals 36 lifeguards. And for these 36 lifeguards, he found the sample mean. I, I can't get the sample mean character here. So I'm going to get it um, on the other workbook. It will be on this side. That mean equals 24 years. N is 36 lifeguard. Then sample mean X bar is said that the sample mean to be 24.7 years. So I'm going to get it from the other workbook. It's going to be 24.7 years X bar. Yeah, the character for X bar is right here. X bar, okay, equal 24.7. So I'm going to copy this and paste it there. Uh, 24.7, and the standard deviation is two years. Delta, okay, is two years. So I'm going to uh, adjust this. Delta is two years. So now we are ready to run the test. Now remember, because this is a p-value method, we don't we don't need the critical value. Just the, what we need is a p-value for our decision criteria. So we have, uh, let's find this. We have this, um, the formula again is Z. Uh, let me take you to where we can put it now. Let me write these numbers down completely. Delta is two. So Z equals, I'll take you where I can put them in. Remember, our population mean is 24. Our sample mean is 36. And our S bar is 24.7. That's a sample, uh, sorry. Our population mean is 24. Our sample size is 36. Our sample mean is 24.7 and uh, population standard deviation is two. So we go um, over there and then um, go to the other so where we can put these numbers in. We have our Z equals uh, the sample mean of X bar minus the population mean mu divided by the standard deviation over the square root of um, n, okay, n, 
and that give us equals um sample mean is 24.7 Population mean was 24 divided by standard deviation of 2 over the square root of 36. So this gives us an equal half uh, z equals 24.7 minus 24 divided by 2 over root 36. So we have, I'm gonna put it in. So you have um 24.7 minus 24, excuse me, 0.7 minus 24, divided by standard deviation of two over the square root of that six. Okay. So we have this as, oh, <laughs> you give me the answer already. 2.1, 2.1, 2 2.1, 2.1. So, we copy the, oh, excuse me, 2.1, right? Uh, so I put it right here, 2.1. And then from here, we'll copy it. Control C. And we go and paste it right there on our workbook. 2.1. Now let's find the p-value. Since we're using the p-value method, p-value, p-value. Equals. Remember, I mentioned um, this is a, this is a, this is a uh, tail test. So I can I can draw the chart here. I think I can draw the chart here. Let me see. Let me draw the chart under. Because well, whatever is on the tail, we're using the table. We subtract the answer from this uh, point five. So this is zero, and we have our answer as two point one zero. So two point one zero here, so that we can draw the bell curve okay so i'm gonna um draw the curve okay and we get this oh <laughs> i messed it up <laughs> let me try, try it again Draw the curve. Ah, put this. Okay, I'm gonna uh, move it in. Now we can put the center line in here. Okay. So these are zero. And then this uh, uh our 2.10 is right here. Let's see right here. They can you know shed it. Okay. Uh shed it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So is that is that a tail? Okay. Now, what is, whenever is at the tail, remember uh, when I I showed you the procedure chart. Uh, I mentioned that when it's at the tail, you subtract the answer from point five. And I'm gonna uh, put it out again. The tail, the procedure chart. Yep. I'm gonna close this. This is procedure chart right here. Can you see the chart? Can you see yes. it? Yes. 
So you can see whenever it's at a tail, in, in any tail, say look up the z value to get the area, subtract the area from 0.5. Now remember, use it if and only if you're using this table. Um, what I'm using. There are two types of table we use for, for the um uh, normal distribution. We use this one. Or that's, that's one that is not cumulative. So if you're using this one, you can use the positive chart. If you know how to use the other table, fine. But uh, if you're using this one, uh, this is how you're going to do it. So because it's at the tail, you can get our p-value as, we look for this one in the table, 2.10. So I'm going to go to the table. This time around, we're not looking inside the table. We're looking from the, on the side because it's z. 2.1 is right here. Can 2, 2.0. can see 2.1. So our answer was um, 2.1 under zero. So you gotta be 2.1, 2.1, go under zero. That give you 0.4821. See, but this is zero right there. 0 0.4821, 0 0.4821, 0 0.500 minus, 0 0.4821. You can see the screen, right? Guys? I just want to make sure that everybody's seen everything. Hello, you can see the screen, of course, right? Yes, we can yeah, see it. Yes. So 0 0.5000 0 0 minus 0 0.4821. So I have... Um, Point. Okay. Um. Zero point five zero 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 minus zero point four eight two one. Point zero one. Zero point zero one. Seven nine. Point zero one seven nine. So that's our p value right there. 0 0.0179. Now, now, this is a, a right tail test. If, it's, if it is two tail tests, like this type, the one that you have, uh, where you have equal and not equal to, I mean, two tail. If this is a two tail test, that means our p value will be this answer multiplied by two. That will give us p value. P value for two terms, but, but this is a one tail test, the right test, so you can just leave it like this. Now we can make our decision now. Decision. Uh, remember the decision criteria. Our P value is this. Okay. So P value right here. P value. Uh, P value. P value equals that. Now let's check. Okay. Make sure I send this. Okay. Then our alpha is this. Our alpha is that. Okay. Now, remember the criteria for making the shonda P value method. It says if the P value is less than or equal to alpha, reject no hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, do not reject hypothesis. Okay, let me ask you this. Is our p-value bigger than alpha or less than alpha? What do you think? Guys, is this p-value bigger than alpha or less than alpha? Can you say that one more time, please? Is this p-value bigger than this alpha? Or is it less than alpha? It is less than. Good. So that means uh, we're going to reject. So reject HO because the p-value of 0 0.01, oh, excuse me. 0, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.
is big, uh, larger than the alpha of 0 0.05. So uh, conclusion now become conclusion. So we rejected HO using the p-value method. Our HO was that um, the um, is less than 24 years and his, his claim was that it is bigger. So since we are rejecting HO, that means we are accepting his claim. So the claim is correct. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that um, the average age of life gap in Ocean City is um, that amount. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average age of lifeguards in Ocean City is greater than 24 years. Um, and so um, any question on this one? Yeah, no question, great. Now, practice, um, I, 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 last week I told you the chapters to study on hypothesis test. Practice more on that. Now, if, look, if you look at the T-test, there's what they call T-test. The same method. I said that we use the T-test. If, if the um, sample size is, is small, when it's less than 30, in that case, use the T-test. And you can study how to do it uh, in those chapters that I, I told you to read up last week and some of those videos too. You can watch those videos I gave you last week. So let's skip the T test. Now, the other one is the uh, Z test for the. Um, okay, I, I gave you all these uh, videos last week, uh, so you can watch them. They will explain it to, uh, how to do it. Some of them even on Excel too. For the proportion test, I also provided the, the chapter to read on that and the video. So read those ones up. Let's look at the um, when the. Uh, when the, the the test when the, when there are two populations, that means you are comparing two means or two proportions. I also provided a video on those ones last week, so I'll read them up. And for those ones, they have a different way of stating their hypothesis because there are two of them. I have this. Uh, this is the ways, and they are also in that video as well. And also, they are in the chapters that I gave you to read. You know. So now let me take you to. Uh, take you to um, the analysis of variance, which is the main thing we have today. Uh, the good news is that analysis of variance is, um, um, it can be done in, everything can be done using Excel, which is a good thing for us. So it will save you a lot of time. And if you look at my announcement, that was the main thing, that is the main thing we have, analysis of variance. So I'm gonna open the uh, topic analysis of variance, and then I'm gonna close the other one. Analysis of variance. Variance. Okay. I'm gonna close the one this one here. Um I'm gonna close this one, close this. Now we have the, I'm gonna close so many things here. Um, this one I'm gonna close. I'll close this so you can have enough room for all of us, see? Then which other one I need to close? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna close this one too. Yeah. So you have enough room. To now, for analysis of variance, um, what we do in ANOVA, we, 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 a short name for it is called ANOVA. Okay, let me make it uh, a little bit bigger, like this. Okay, make it uh, 16 font size of 15. 
the font size of 15 or 16. Good, that's better. Now, in analysis of variance, uh, our goal is to test claim that involve three or more means. Um, yeah, well, 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 you know, you know the, the one with the hypothesis test we did, the one I was able to cover tonight is one sample test. But for two sample tests, we are testing two means. But when it's more than two means, like three mean, three or more means, we use uh, when it's more than two means, we use an uh, analysis of variance. For example, um, a researcher might want to know um, whether the means of the time it takes three group of students to solve a computer program problem is using Fortran, Basic, and Pascal are different. Now, um, so you see that there, there are three of things. Uh, the computer program is three of them, three programs, Fortran, Basic, and Pascal. So three, three means of this three. Now, we can also use to compare, uh, how about this one, whereby uh, a scientist want to see if three different type of fertilizers can have, how they can affect growth of plants. So they might use three different fertilizers um, on three group of identical plants. So, um, then, you know, you plant those, uh, uh, it, till you know plant those crops and then apply the fertilizer after a certain period they, they can measure the height of those plants then can they can use what's called one way ANOVA to find the difference um to find the, you know if there is a significant difference in the growth between the three groups in that case what if you this if this this is the one that i mean i mean when we look at the experiment from this scientist. He is basically comparing the average plant height among three group of uh, the plant to see if the fertilizer is um, the effect of the fertilizer. In this case, even though they have three different uh, pla you know, plants, they are looking for the effect of one factor, fertilizer. On the first one, we are looking for the effect of one factor, also, yeah, which is a computer program. So as a result, we call it a one-way ANOVA. So in a one-way ANOVA, um, the variance is compared, we are comparing, to, uh, you know, we are looking for the effect of one particular factor, which is what, which is mainly they call it one-way ANOVA. But for two-way ANOVA, you are looking for two different factors, you know. So when doing ANOVA, uh, there are a few things we need to know. Uh, we use what we call the F-test when we are doing ANOVA. We use the F-test to test our claims. Now, for three groups or more, F-test can only show whether the, there is a difference. So it, can, it, it won't tell us where, to, where the difference actually exists. I mean, where it lies. But it will tell us if there's a difference or not. If we, if you, now, if you want to know if where the difference lies, we can use other tests, like uh, what they call the, the SCAF test and the uh, TOKI test. You know, in... in, in um, the, the quiz might 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 give you the result of the test and they ask you to you know explain what it means. So uh, in in analysis of variance, uh, the the factor describes the cause of the variation in the data. For example, um, uh, when uh, one factor is being considered, then we call it a one way. Another. For example, I've already mentioned it. How about this one, whereby a researcher is interested. Uh, in determining whether there is a difference in the consumer satisfaction ratings between three fast food chains. The three fast food chains are here, you see, here is, uh, let's say it's McDonald's, Burger King, or uh, Wendy's. Now, in this case, because the researcher is, uh, you, you want to know the variation of, in the customer ratings, you know, and, and it's due to one factor, which is food chains, then we can call it uh, also. Um, one way ANOVA as well. Now, um, a level in ANOVA describes the number of categories within the uh, factor of interest. For example, you might have in the in the one I just explained about the researcher who is interested in determining whether there is a difference in the consumer satisfaction between McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. So, with that case, we have um three different fast food chains. That means we have three levels, McDonald's, um, Burger King, and Wendy's. Yep. 
Now, and then the simplest type of ANOVA is known as what we call the completely randomized one-way ANOVA. In this case, we have a, an independent random selection observation for each level of fat. Now, the assumption we made, there are few, so some assumptions assumption that we made when we're doing ANOVA. Of course, you know that ANOVA means analysis of variance. So the assumptions, first one is that the population from which the samples we are obtained must be normally distributed or appropriately normally distributed. Second one is that the samples must be independent of one another. And then the third one is the uh, variance of the population must also be equal. So um, there are also some terms we need to get know and understand when we do ANOVA. Um, remember that even though we are comparing the means using the F test when we do ANOVA, well, we usually use variances, you know, in the test instead of means because we're testing how the means varies. So now um, with the F test, actually, two different estimates of population variances are met. Namely, first one is the between group variance, which means uh, involved finding the variance of the means. And the second one is uh, within group variance, uh, which is found by completing the variance using all the data, data and is not affected by the difference of means. Now, um, so because you're comparing the how this mean varies, it's called an analysis of uh, variance. Uh, so can you give me a minute? Just one minute. My mom is calling me. Just one minute. Hello. Hello, mommy. Hello. 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 I'm on a class. I'm watching you guys, my major. And my cousin Clark, I'm watching you guys, my major. All right. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. So now, hypothesis test on the ANOVA. Um, so this is how we state the hypothesis for ANOVA. Because there, there are three means now, three things we are comparing. And uh, we have um the first one would be HO, mean one equals mean two equals mean three. If more than three, you continue. It, so then the H1 will be at least one of the means will be different. So we use the if uh, H uh, F test. Now, if you're using the formula method, you're gonna go through all these steps here, but, but we'll be using Excel. So Excel will give us the result we want. So uh let's try um this um ANOVA using Excel. We're gonna try this question. Let's look at this question first. This part of the question we're gonna solve now. Okay, this after this will be all will be done for the day. Um, so let me uh, get get all the way down here. Make it uh sixteen. Yeah, it says here a researcher wishes to try different techniques for to lower the blood pressure uh, of individual diagnosed with high blood pressure. So the subjects are randomly assigned to three different groups. The first group takes medication, the second group exercises, and the third group follows a special diet. After four weeks, the reduction in each person's blood pressure is recorded. See the table below. See this, this one, this group take medication, this group they do exercise, this one use dieting. They are both, all the group are, they are trying to reduce the Blood, lower their blood pressure. The question says, at alpha 0 0.05, test the claim that there is no difference among the means. Then it says, identify the sum of squares between the groups. Sum of squares within the groups and the means squares. Summarize the results. So um, let's do it. First thing is to steal hypothesis, of course. Um, do you want me to let me uh, get something from here? Yeah. Let's do the hypothesis. We have um, between groups. Hypothesis is um, that mu1 minus mu2 minus mu3. That means the claim. There's no difference. Uh, because they are trying to figure out 
uh, different techniques to lower blood pressure. It says here, they wish to try different techniques to lower the blood pressure of individual with blood pressure, high blood pressure. So the question was, that is clear that there, there is no difference, that there is no difference in means, that's the claim. That's why we have mean one equals mean two equals mean three. That means there's no difference. And H1 means at least one of the means is different from the other. And alpha point zero one. Now, like I say, if you're using the formula method, you're gonna be calculating all this. But I still will do it for us and answer both questions at the same time. So it says here, part B said, identify the sum of squares between means, between group, sum of squares within group, the mean squares, and then summarize the ANOVA table. So look at, this is how the ANOVA table looks like. They look like this, okay? But like I said, this, this one is the between groups, then um, I will have, uh, so you can see the sum of squares within group, within group, between group error, and then uh, the mean squares are right here, and the F ratio for the F test. So, but I still will give us both the F ratio and the um, P value. So let's do it in Excel. Um, so you see this kind of thing, this will take you like one hour or two hours to finish. But once you put it in Excel, you can, in five minutes you are done. <laughs> so let's see, I'm copying it. I'm gonna put it in Excel. I'm gonna open another page and paste it right here. Control V, this one is diet. And this one is medication. Okay. Right here. Now let, we're going to do the Excel. You there? Are you still awake, guys? Yes. Good, good, good. Yes, we're still here. Okay, very good. We can click on data. Um, data analysis. Oh, there's no there's no data analysis on this one. So I'm going to um let me have it, but this in this new particular this particular uh, workbook it does not. So I'm gonna close this Excel. I'm open another one. You should have the analysis. So if it doesn't have it, then I will, I can uh install it there. Okay, I'm gonna open this one. Okay. Okay, make sure you are seeing this. Okay, good. Gonna paste it. Okay, uh, put this here as a size. Okay, make sure everybody's seen it. Then, data, you can see the data analysis right here. Click on that. Now, we are doing, uh, you can see this, right? You can see this dialog box, right? Hello, guys. Yes, we can. Good. So I'm doing a two sample, uh, a single factor. One fact. Remember, I, I explained that we are. We, this will be. Uh, where is it? Oh, excuse me. Um, it's right here, I believe. What is it? What is it? What is it? okay? What is my paper? Yeah, I'll open it from here. Yeah, good. Um, right here. So this is um. Uh, one factor, one way and over, one way and over, see, one way and over. So that's why it's a single factor. You have single factor and over. Uh, okay. So because of that, we're gonna choose in Excel, there's an over single factor. Click on that, click okay. So the input range, you just click on here and then Copy the all of them, highlight all of them, okay? And we group them by column. You can see the medication is the first column, exercise is the second column, diet the third column. So I will group by column, it's right there already. Then labels, remember I was, I when I when I selected them, I selected both their names. So I'm gonna check labels. By default, they put us alpha 0 0.05 because yeah, you put it on, by default, they put alpha, but if, if, it, if it is 0 0.01, if the alpha is 0 0.01, you can just um, manually change it to 0 0.01 alpha. You can just change it to 0 0.05, but it's 0 0.05, so we leave it like that. 
Uh, for the output range, I click on this. I put it, let me put the output right here. Okay. Then click OK. See, it gave us everything we need. So I'm going to uh, copy this. And then um, I'm to see, go to our workbook. Yeah, workbook. And then paste it here. But let me paste it under another table so I can see. Uh, I can go, okay, I can paste right there. So you can see the, um, it says here, um, find the, uh, is there a difference? We can see the p value right here. P value. I can see the p value. Uh, maybe this is smaller, too small. I'll make it bigger. Maybe 16. Uh, it, will be, it will scatter. <laughs> it will scatter. Make it, uh, make it 14, probably. Yep. That's better. You can see the p value right here. I can see the critical value. You can the same critical value you have here. You can see right here. You can see right there. So now, um, and it also wants us to identify uh, between groups, say between group, some of squared within group. Now see the between group right here. Between group, it's right there. Hold on this row. Within group is also here. I'm going to have a F result for F, and this is a P value right here. It's a critical. So now let's make a decision. Decision. There are two, either you use the p-value or you use the critical value. Decision will be, um, use the critical value. I'm gonna show you both ways. Critical value, value equals um, 3 point. You know what, uh, I, I'm gonna make a quick adjustment here. So that it will, it will save us as a lot of headache. Let me make a, an adjustment in Excel before I copy it back to that place. Okay. I'm gonna um this one, the whole of this, I'm gonna make them four decimal places each. Or trace each. Then this one, the same thing. Um then the whole of this, okay, put this map place, put this map place. So that means I can now copy it. Let me make it uh, the borders to be, you know, okay, zip. So like that, I can now copy it. Make it easy on us. Uh, I'm gonna undo this. Okay. Actually, what we need is this one. That's the one we need. I'm gonna copy this and go to our workbook and paste it. See, I can make it bigger. Uh, 14 it should be good enough. So I can, yeah. So you can see the bit now. Let's make a the critical value is 3.885. Okay. The calculated value critical value, calculated F, uh, critical value for F that is F critical FC. That's the FC as a critical value for F, FC. Calculated value. Uh, F F star. I mean it's F. So I'm gonna make it um uh 14 as well. You have it here from the table as 9.168. 9.168. Now critical value is the calculated value is bigger than critical value, so we reject HO. Reject. Oh, reject HO. HO. Because 
the calculated value calcul calculated value of um nine point one six eight is greater than exceeds the critical value value of 3.885. See? That means um, we, re we are rejecting this claim here because the critical value is, the calculated value is bigger than critical value. And if you want to use a um, p-value method, you can say a uh, p-value P value, uh, which is um, P value is, I make it bigger. I make it sixteen. P value equals. You can see from right here. You can see the P value right there. Zero point zero zero four. And then that means the and our alpha is 0 0.05 0 0.05 again our alpha our p -value, our alpha our p -value is, is smaller than alpha we still reject see reject reject h o since the p value of 0 0.004 is less than than our alpha of 0 0.05. So you can see that in each case, whether you're using the traditional method or where you use critical value, or if you're using the p-value method, in each case, you reject it. So that means conclusion. Conclusion now becomes, okay, becomes, um, so, so you, are reject, you rejected the null hypothesis that, that, that there's no difference. So that you will conclude that at least one of the means is different. So if you reject the claim, uh, that means the, this one is the correct one. So there's not enough evidence to support the claim. So uh, there is not enough evidence. There is insufficient. Evidence to support the claim which means that that at least one of the uh mean you know, at least one mean is different from the others. Now, which of the means, it, it won't tell us which mean is different, but you say, at least, well, you say at least one of them. Which of the means is different? You will know until you do what is called a scaf test and uh, toke test. Uh, that, will, that will now tell you uh, which mean is different. So this is where we'll stop for tonight. Remember, um, to any question before we, uh, before I give you my last information, and go any question. I do have a question about the critical review paper. Oh, critical review. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm I remember I mentioned that I'm going to do a sample for you guys. Okay. I'm going to sample by, by Saturday night. I'll have it. Um I'll post an announcement. Um yeah, I'm gonna post an announcement here. Uh yeah, gonna be put it right here. So I'll attach it. Yes, you said Friday yeah. night? Saturday night, probably. But it might be it might, I, might, I might do it earlier than that. But latest Saturday night. Okay. I'm just wondering like the page requirement is, is that also gonna be listed on there? Yeah, well, at least uh, maybe two pages. Okay. Just an analysis, just to uh, uh, review the article, you know. I, that's why I'm gonna show you an example. Okay, okay. Through, through okay. that sample, you should be, you'll be fine. Okay, so thank I will, you. I will use it, I will get an, an article, do the review, a sample, then attach it. So you can see the format, how it will look, uh, both, both, 
you know, APA style, you know, you will see how it looks. So you can see how you do your own. Uh -huh. Okay, no problem. Any other question, guys? No, uh, and you're gonna post this Zoom call on the front page too. Yeah, I'm gonna post it. Uh, um, the uh, announcement with the with the link to the Zoom Zoom uh, uh video. You're, you're talking about the video, right? This class. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I post it. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that, Professor. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I was driving home some of the way, so I missed some of the stuff. Oh, okay. No problem. All right, guys. Other than that, we are done. Enjoy uh, the rest of the week. Okay. Thank you. You as well. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good week. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.